Dept is a global marketing and tech agency known for pioneering work with the world's top brands. Born in the Netherlands and now spread across the globe, Dept has a culture of experimentation and risk taking. Prior to the pandemic, Dept had a traditional office model, central hub offices in cities like Amsterdam, Berlin, and San Diego, smaller spoke offices in cities like Zurich, Dublin, and Portland. So Dept has grown really quickly, and with each acquisition, we're bringing another office into the fold. Our initial strategy was to have tier one hub offices and tier two spoke offices. And we tried to really make uniform design throughout all of the offices across the globe. So our depth offices in Europe have a cool and creative vibe. They're an eclectic mix of furnishings with uh, quirky accents. As a B Corp, we're also very mindful of uh, materials that we use and also our energy consumption. Like most companies dealing with the global pandemic, Depp switched to a fully remote model, which was a smooth but expensive transition for this digital agency. We were already accustomed to working remotely, so from that perspective, the lockdown didn't really affect our productivity, but what it did affect was our budget. Many of our clients are in some of the world's most expensive cities across the globe and rentals for our office spaces are our third largest item on our budget. Right off the bat, Dept was so innovative, creative, and just really open to new ideas when it came to their office. So once we heard about their situation and plans, we were super excited to work with them. Like most companies, the lifting of lockdown stay-at-home restrictions was a welcome reprieve. But it was clear that how employees were thinking about their ideal office experience had changed for good. We basically, sort of took a moment and said, okay, we're a digital products company. We build products for people. We always tell folks, start with asking your users for feedback. We started with like, what does our staff want? And then we'll figure it out. What works in the US might not fly uh, in Germany. So really how we would accommodate, you know, all of our Debsters worldwide was quite a puzzle. So we ran this employee survey and the response from the DEP USA people was incredibly consistent. 30% said, I cannot wait to come back. I am sick of being at home. Another 30% said, I'm super productive. I do not miss that commute. I am never coming back to the office, no matter what. And the remaining 40% basically said, maybe. But what was consistent across all of those groups is that they wanted a different experience. Everyone wanted a shorter commute. No one wanted just an open floor plan with a sea of desks, and they all wanted to go smaller. So we thought through with them how we were gonna make this work in a different way that met their needs in terms of the time that they worked, and also the way in which they worked when they were in the offices. There was also consistency that everyone liked our Newburyport office way better than the Boston office. So the Boston office was a big central hub, super fancy sea of desks, everyone with headphones, big open floor plan, classic tech space. The Newburyport office is this funky little crooked brick building between the ice cream shop and the orthodontist. Literally on a pedestrian street, kids running by, multiple floors. It is the exact opposite of a modern tech company's offices. And the funny thing is, is that everyone said, that's better. It's small, it's close to where I live. It's a regular group of 12 to 15 people. It's got a mix of seating. This clubhouse, this spoke to the central hub, this is better. We'd much prefer spokes, we don't need a hub. This was the breakthrough in office strategy for Dept. It was the realization that the traditional hub and spoke office model no longer made sense for Dept. So yeah, we just completed the survey. Uh, I was out in Boulder, Colorado with my son and we we're walking down Pearl Street, which is like the main shopping district. And I spied between the coffee shop and the bookstore on the second floor where you'd normally see like the local lawyer was a Salesforce sign. 
And right next to it was Twitter and VMware. And I was like, wow, all these big tech companies have these little clubhouses down the main thoroughfare of Pearl Street and they're part of the community. It's close to where people live and they're these cool little spaces. Um, and I sort of had that epiphany moment where I'm like, well, geez, <laughs> if, it, if it's good enough for Mark Benioff, the CEO of Salesforce, well then surely it's good enough for us. So I like that we were building something new and that we build an office experience that suits the local culture. We met with some companies who were talking about how to have different signage or where to put furniture in a different place. But I really liked the idea that we were taking the user feedback and challenging our traditional assumptions and building something different. At Robin, we really pride ourselves on being experts of hybrid work. We build tech solutions that help empower teams to create workplace experiences that really focus on the people. So it was a perfect fit. So we had our strategy. Get rid of the central hub. We're just doing clubhouses. But the trick was a lot of the reason why those clubhouses worked was because they were small, multiple floors, an easy commute, kind of cool, funky space. We have a bunch of people that live in Boston. How are we going to replicate that clubhouse model of Newburyport in the suburbs in the middle of Boston? It's not an easy thing to do. On our next episode, we went with a standard design theme the golden age of cruise travel. I'm not so sure about that. We had just signed this new contract and then a new variant comes. So we go into lockdown again. With budget approval from the DEPT board, work begins on the first new DEPT office in the United States, having the greatest cluster of employees in the Massachusetts metro area. Boston is the most logical place to create the new DEPT clubhouse. Our office feedback basically said smaller spaces built for collaboration closer to home. People told us, focus work is for home. I will work at a desk while I'm there. I want to come to an office to see people and work together. And that was our primary use case. Prior to the pandemic, we had space discussions about how many desks that we would need. If we're hiring X amount of people per year, we'll need X amount of desk space. This employee feedback that working at a desk was a secondary case freed us from worrying about desk space. We estimate between 125 and 150 feet per person. But with the shift to more focus work versus working at desks, we were able to rent less space and make better use of our office. So our maps make it easy to see who's in when, what spaces are available, and then our analytics help the workplace teams gather feedback and optimize their office even more. The search begins for the perfect space in Boston. The goal was to find something small and intimate, yet upscale and functional for years to come. In addition, the clubhouse needed to be an easy commute for employees who live around the city and within budget. This is not an easy search in Boston, a downtown area known for older, inefficient buildings, all with expensive rents. It's very rare you have an opportunity to, you know, stack a building with this size floor plates in downtown Boston with good commuting access in the middle of a really vibrant area. After months of searching, Steele and his team at SDG find a unique space that seems to have the potential to meet Depp's needs. It's a small building, centrally located between both train lines, and a complete gut renovation. Fortunately for me, I, I see buildings like this all the time, and you can see you know, the opportunity, and I think um, the landlord was incredibly accommodating, very interactive, was really excited about the opportunity. So finding a really good match on the ownership side was super important as well. For as long as we've owned the building, it's always been lawyers and corporate types, you know, run-of-the-mill type office people. So Depp's approach was much different from the norm. Um, mainly, they really didn't want an office. They didn't want rows of desks in every floor. So they didn't really want an office. They wanted pretty much what would amount to a pretty sweet condo right in the middle of the city. There's this concept in software development called delighters. It's like the I'm feeling lucky button on the Google homepage. It doesn't have a utility to it, but it's something fun 
that delights users. And so we stole this idea of delighters from software development as we thought about our office design. Um, what are the things we might add that would just encourage people to come and hang out that had nothing to do with work, but was very appropriate for these type of uh, folks that we work together. And in Newburyport, we did a tiki bar in the basement just because it was fun and it got a ton of use. But it was one of those things where we had built this delighter. It has nothing to do with office space, but it was just something fun to encourage people to come in and check out the office. And it worked really well. And so the thought was, what might we do in Boston as a delighter? Just as they used user feedback to determine the best use case for the office, Dept used additional user testing. Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Berlin, we have a lot of strategists and visual designers and creatives who work out of that space. It's everything you would expect a cool modern agency's office to look like. Here in Boston, we have more software engineers and UX designers. And so the big trick here was to figure out how do you find the balance between making it look like a depth office, equally cool, but still make it appropriate for the software engineers that like a warmer, friendlier, uh, kookier aesthetic. And so we had to kind of find that, that line. And just as we finished the design plan, COVID reared its ugly head again. We had just signed this new contract. Other companies are still leaving the city. So this already feels like a risk. On our next episode, lockdown, supply chain, permit issues, like we've completely blown our schedule. Our glass vendor totally screwed us, and we still don't have an inspection date with the city. At this point, it could be weeks or months, uh, but we're definitely behind. In order to meet the tight deadline, Dept hired a new office manager to help with the project management and build out. The design of the office quickly solidified around specific use cases for each floor. While splitting staff across multiple floors could be seen as a negative at other companies, the team at Dept believed that having multiple small floors would be an advantage for their clubhouse plans. If your primary use case of the office is focus work, then multiple floors is definitely a problem. But if your primary use case is collaboration, then multiple floors is a huge benefit. You can accommodate lots of different seating and still introduce all these little delighters to try to bring people back in. Depth's goal was to create a layout that accommodated and even promoted collaboration and community. So at Robin, people-powered spaces are kind of our specialty. We hit the ground running. The team started with the sixth floor at the top of the building given the abundance of natural light and great views. It was decided that the top floor would be used for executive meetings, M&A discussions, and hosting client visits. So our sixth floor is what we called our fancy floor, and we feel that it was very close to the depth office in Europe. So even like pre-pandemic, depth offices always had residential elements to it. With this clubhouse model, we're definitely pushing this further. By using residential furnishings, not only do you benefit from a greater variety of stuff and a greater variety of price, but you can kind of lean into that clubhouse feel and we're less impacted by supply chain issues. The fifth floor was the heart of the office. The main kitchen was a focal point for this floor, combined with traditional privacy booths and soft seating areas. So on the fifth floor, we knew we were gonna put a kitchen in there so we saw an opportunity to really have the most variety of space. It really gave us an opportunity to kind of introduce people to all the different ways that they can use the space all in one floor. The fourth floor was the most traditional. This became Depp's focus floor with traditional desks and some communal tables that could be used for quiet work. Each type of work has different requirements and our maps make it easy to see what you can find in each area. 
We set up labels so that it's easy to see what each space is used for and what technology is available, like monitors, cameras, standing desks, or more. Team members could easily book the type of space they needed ahead of time or in real time with our QR stickers. And we've got probably 50 people in the Boston area and about a dozen desks. Freeing ourselves up from desk work being the primary use case to the secondary use case, it made it feel like that was really the right amount of desks. The third floor was designed to be a reception for visiting guests. In addition, this was an area that allowed for the first non-work delighter to attract staff back to the office. And it'll generally be another person from a debt company visiting us. So we scrapped the idea of having a receptionist desk and added in a TV monitor screen to direct you where to go. When you're inviting clients or guests into the office, you really want the experience to be as seamless as possible. So our visitor management tools help the DEP team rethink what their workplace experience would be like for guests. With Robin, the team members can invite guests, help them with check-in, and then give them a clear map of what they're walking into. The best part was introducing our first delighter. The Meeker Lab was the first of multiple delighters. When you blow up the central hub and you move to clubhouses, one of the risks is that you could have fragmentation, right? Like you could be creating clicks that don't interact with one another. And so the way we wanted to guard against that, or one of the ways, is we created these delighters in each office. Then, an unpleasant surprise. Our glass vendor totally screwed us, and we still don't have an inspection date with the city. At this point, it could be weeks or months. 30% of our furniture is like, lost in transit, um, we're way over budget, we blew past the opening date. Like this thing is starting to feel like a giant mistake. On our next episode. I'm very nervous about the COVID cases being so unpredictable. The opening party is in a few weeks and we still have no idea if we're gonna have occupancy permits from the city. I'm confident about the party. We'll get people to come to the party, but like, what do we do after that? It's been six months of work and the team is nearing the finish line. Unexpected issues with the supply chain, moving company, and city permits have taken a toll on morale. One of the disadvantages of looking for an office in Boston is that the stairwells are very narrow. We had to swing a few pieces up through a crane over our neighbor's roof and through a window. It's a very sketchy process. It's, if not done correctly, bad things can happen. There was this one instance where I saw a sub-zero floor slip through the chains, smash on the pavement. Um, so yeah, you gotta be really careful in these cases. Despite the setbacks, the team can see the finish line in sight. Work begins on planning the opening day party and a soft open is done with the design team for some early user testing. Rolling out a new strategy can be one of the hardest parts of the process. The stakes are really high and you need employees to buy into everything. We set up surveys in-app to make it easy to ask the right questions and gather that real measurable feedback so that teams can figure out what's working and what isn't as soon as they can. Remember how I said the secondary use case was sitting at a desk in the office for our employees? Well, we just had a bunch of folks in. It was great, but can you guess what the first thing they did was? They all sat at a desk. And with the new space, people generally sat where they felt comfortable at the desks. It only took them a short amount of time before they started exploring the office. This initial group of user testers have overwhelmingly positive feedback. Everything from like furnishings, layout, it's all totally different from what you'd expect to find in an office. It's basically just like a super fancy condo and it's absolutely perfect for this party. I'm so excited. Here's a lesson we learned. We didn't buy enough privacy booths. Because we're all sitting on these Zoom calls, yes, people are coming into the office and that's great, but they're still bouncing from half hour Zoom call to half hour Zoom call. And they felt self-conscious doing it in a big open seating area. And so we had to blow up one of the soft seating areas and just basically add more privacy booths. 
But this is one of the benefits of when you treat your office like an MVP, a minimal viable product. You launch the first version, you observe how people are using it, and you tweak it as you go. With the soft opening providing some useful lessons, the team gears up for the final push to the opening day party. The primary goal when building a hybrid office is giving the space purpose. So what's one thing that people really can't get when they're working at home? That face-to-face -face social interaction. Hosting an event that brings your team together is, in my opinion, one of the best ways to get people engaged and excited to use the space initially. It's been two years. People have been at home, staring at a screen, on Zoom call after Zoom call. They've forgotten what it's like to be part of this company. And, you know, it'll be super helpful having everyone come back and feeling, you know, excited to see their colleagues again. And I'm definitely not nervous about getting people in for a party. But will they come back after that? On our final episode. It's finally starting to pick up and people definitely seem more optimistic. When Depth was asking for a yoga studio and arcade games, I really didn't get it, but now I do. Yeah, so we spent all this time and money pulling together this space and we have a sense of how it's working out. But now we actually need the data. While the party was a success, the real test begins. It's the first week for Depp's new clubhouse in Boston. Will people start coming back on a regular basis? So this is our first week and we're in observation mode. We're not telling people to come in. We're just seeing who comes in, where they sit, and letting them explore the new place. We spent all this time and money pulling together this space and we have a sense of how it's working out. But now we actually need the data. Work begins on implementing Robin across the office, scheduling for conference rooms, desks, and privacy booths. Work moves quickly and introduces additional use cases unique to the space. One of the first things we wanted to do was set up our reservation system in Robin. This is easy to do and it allowed us to track how they use the office. So we were confident we could get our employees to track data via Robin for reserving a desk or a conference room. Like that was a no-brainer. The trickier thing is we built all these delighter areas, uh, the Maker Lab, the Arcade, the Yoga Studio. How do you track usage of areas where you can only passively collect that data? The DEP team is able to extend the core functionality of the Robin platform to capture data on their entire office, which uncovers some interesting lessons. Our arcade room is a big hit with the engineers just as a board game night in the library. In our original survey, it was all about collaboration space. And so that's what we optimized for. But it's funny, now that we've actually had people back in, we've realized that we underestimated privacy space. Um, we're all still very much on these Zoom calls. It's a mix of working together or hopping on a quick call. And so we probably went a little heavy on collaboration space and didn't offer enough privacy spaces when we opened. And so we've started taking like little alcoves and quiet areas and turning them into privacy spaces and that seems to be working. When it comes to hybrid work, one size really does not fit all. So I've worked with many teams to implement new strategies and no two have really ever been the same. It's really all about balance. And a great thing about Robin is the ability to adjust. Things can change fast, so the platform ensures that Dept can easily assign seats, relabel desks, move them around in the layout, and just match their new ideas just as quickly. Attendance keeps growing, much to Dave and Brett's relief. Having the data from Robin is like super helpful. Like it feels great having people come in and you can observe the usage, but having that empirical data that you can share with your boss or the board to show like, hey, people are actually using the space and these are the parts that worked and these are the parts that didn't. Having that data is incredibly powerful. When Dept was asking for a yoga studio and arcade games, I really didn't get it. But 
now I do. It's amazing to see how many people come on the weekends just to hang out or stay late during the week. At Debt, we talk about global strategy with local empowerment. And I think this clubhouse really fits the bill. By moving to the clubhouse model, we were able to look at the data and really figure out how we were going to shrink our office space needs while also making everybody happy. And who knows, this might become a competitive advantage for us at Depth in the future. Hybrid work is human, and it gives people the flexibility to do their best work wherever they are. Dept has done a fantastic job of giving their office purpose, listening to their teams, and building something that will really bring people together. They put so much time and effort and thought into building a really engaging company culture, and our team at Robin is super happy to be able to support that. At that time in the pandemic, everyone was asking the same questions. Like, do you force people back? Will people ever come back to the city? What kind of furniture configurations make sense? There was no one talking about the actual model itself. Does hub and spoke still work? And so I'm proud that we actually looked at the model and said, you know what? Maybe that's no longer right. Maybe we try something new there. And we did. And, you know, it worked for us. And, are we advocating that everyone switches from a central office to a clubhouse? Absolutely not. Um, but what we are advocating for is you should treat your office like it is truly a minimum viable product, an MVP. Ask your users what they want. Do some research. Start small. Launch your initial MVP. Observe how people are using it. Gather data from something like Robin and then tweak as you go. That's the important lesson I think we really took away from this whole thing. You should totally buy a Mandalorian pinball. <laughs>